Hello race fans and welcome to the DFS NASCAR tutorial video. Before we get started I want to tell you just a little bit about Roto Pros. This is our homepage. This is where you're going to find our articles each and every week. Right now Dane has his uh, breakdown looking at a season preview and strategy perspective. And then after the qualifying dual races on Thursday he's going to have a write up as well for the Daytona 500 and his favorite core plays in each, each position as well as we're going to have um a podcast coming up as well on friday night and then sunday morning we're going to have another live show um i'll be on just kind of answering questions with everything that's going on and if you're not a roto pros member yet make sure to get over to the site and click on the sign up button uh, to get in and get your free trial into our community chat um, we have information that we post information stats trends all that kind of stuff that we post throughout the week in our slack chat um, as well as that's where we post our skeleton lineups which is just a look at uh, three to four core plays that we're looking at uh, building around um, in some of our gpp as well as cash game builds so we do have a trial period of three days for anyone that signs up for a weekly and a seven day trial period for anyone that signs up for a monthly or yearly and if you use promo code chris you can get also get 50% off on your first purchase after that trial is out. With that, let's jump into the tutorial video. For the tutorial video, we're going to use the Daytona 500 sheet. It's the one that's coming up here. We've got that race on Sunday. So it's pretty much going to be the same. There's a couple of one-off things that the Daytona 500 does that other races don't. We'll touch on that a little bit as we go through. But for the most part, I just want to kind of run you through the sheet, how to use it, what the stats mean, um, how I go about my research each and every week, and how to use the model as well. So first of all, if you are going to be using the model, um, maybe you're a little more experienced user, experienced with Google Sheets, um, we've talked maybe and gone through that sort of thing, definitely go ahead and make your own file. Um, you can do this as well just if you even just want to sort different columns. So go to make a copy, name it whatever you'd like there, and click OK. It's going to open up a editable version of this sheet, uh, which will be yours and yours alone. Um, you can then go ahead, like right now I've got it sorted by DraftKings salary. If I wanted to go and sort by FanDuel, I just click anywhere in that column F. Go up to data and sort Z to A, highest to lowest, and then you're going to be sort by uh, FanDuel. Um, there is times when you want to sort lowest to highest. That would be uh, columns like average finish. We want to find who's got the best average finish over the last two years at Daytona. We're going to go up to data um, and click A to Z, and then there we have it. Um, so I'm going to go back. I'm going to sort by DraftKings here. So there's the DraftKings and FanDuel sellers. We've got the manufacturer of the car to the left of the driver as well as the car number here as well. I'm also going to be adding uh, team names as well this season, um, just so you know which teams on who, especially in terms of Daytona 500, um, Talladega, those sort of races where um, you can do some team stacks. And we'll talk about that as the season goes on as well. But pretty much the restrictor, it's not restrictor plate tracks now, but the super speedways um, where you're going to see a lot of teams and man like manufacturers working together. Um, that's something we'll talk about in the Daytona 500 preview as well, some of the strategy stuff. So then over to the right here, uh, the green, that's going to be your track and track type history. We'll start with current track history, which is the last two years. So for Daytona, that is four races. We've got every driver's how many wins they've got in that time. Top fives, tens, twenties, laps led, average starting position, average finishing position, and then uh, in those four races, their average DraftKings as well as FanDuel salary. So then moving over, we look at career track history at that track, this being Daytona. It's the number of races they've raced in their career at Daytona. Wins, top fives, tens, twenties, same thing, laps led, average start, average finish. And then we move into track type, so Daytona being a super speedway. Uh, next week they head to Las Vegas, that is an intermediate track. Um, some of the intermediate tracks, you know, maybe run, run different packages or something. I will have that split up each and every week just to give you the most accurate data in terms of, you know, modeling out and finding your favorite drivers. So track type, that's a number. Um, this is the last two years, number of races on super speedways each of the last two years. There's two races at Daytona, two at Talladega every year um, times two years, so that's eight. Um, number wins, all the same stats as before. DraftKings average and FanDuel average right now. I'm only looking at the 2019 season, so that would be a four-race sample size. That's just because they did change from a restrictor plate to a tapered spacer last year. A little bit different, so I just wanted to pull just that data for fantasy as well for the Daytona 500. So I do have that there. Normally, right beside this column, you're going to find current form. 
That's going to look at the last six races overall. That will be back on the sheet once we get to some more sample size in this 2020 season. And then right now, the season form is a look at last year's stats. Um, as you can see, I'm not putting any weight on that for this race or any races early on, but it just gives you kind of a look at uh, who the top drivers were last year, especially if you're kind of new to NASCAR or, you know, just kind of learning the driver's teams. Um, you know, maybe last year was your first season. So it's just nice to have that data there as well. So then as we, that's kind of where I start the week is looking at that data, kind of breaking it down. Um, who's got, who's good on the, on that track type, who's good at that track in the short term versus long term, um, who's doing good this season, who's doing good overall on the season to kind of put that all together early in the week. And then of course, come the weekend, we've got practice and qualifying. So that's on here as well. So right now for the Daytona 500, they've ran two practices. Um, so I've got the rank in each practice here, practice one and practice two, and then their actual lap times. Um, just kind of important because when you start getting down into, let's say, I'm just going to sort practice one rankings. The difference between first and 10th, you know, is only 0 0.4, 0 0.3 of a second versus you get down here at the bottom and like the difference here is almost a full second on some of these guys. So it's just good for reference. And then at the end of the practices, what I've been doing is rather than averaging out their ranking um, of the practice one, two, three, however many practices they run that weekend at each and every track, I'm going to be averaging their lap time just to be a little bit more accurate again in the modeling. And then once qualifying's out, that information will be plugged in here as well as well as 5, 10, 15 lap averages. Not so much at Daytona, Talladega, Super Speedway tracks. Um, that information is definitely key when we start getting into the intermediate, short tracks, that sort of stuff. So you will see that information on the sheet. And then the model. Um, this over here is just ranking all the stuff that we talked about over on the left in terms of track history, and I've color-coded it the same. So that you can see it here, we've got track history the last two years, DK and FanDuel averages, career track history, that's average finish, track type history, that's average finish last two years, and then right now it's DraftKings and FanDuel averages for 2019 on that track type as well, and then the season. Um, so there's going to be a little bit more added to that, but pretty much anything in this orange area here is the model, and it adds up to 100. Um, as you can tell here, and that will change. So if I take 30 off here, it's gonna go down to 70, obviously. So this is just kind of my pre-model uh, for Daytona 500. So I've got 5% on each of the first two practices, 40% on the track history, average finish last two years, 20% on career track history, and 30% on track type history. That's kind of how I build the model. Um, on most tracks, especially when we're talking intermediate tracks, I'm gonna be looking at a lot more weight on practice and qualifying. You're probably gonna see about 60 to 70% of my overall model will fall on practice and qualifying, being that nothing was rained out and they actually run all the full practices. Um, Daytona 500 is a little different. They do qualifying, which sets the front two rows um, with the on Sunday right before the clash. Um, so once they do that, of, of course, only the front two rows, and then there's the dual races on Thursday. That is going to set, like, dual number one, I believe, sets the inside row. Dual number two sets the outside row, or vice versa, one of the two. So they have the two races on Thursday. A normal race weekend is usually going to consist of a practice on Friday followed by qualifying, two more practices on Saturday. That's one route um, that's very common. The other one is two practices on Saturday with qualifying coming after that. So it's just a matter of where the qualifying falls in terms of the practice. Practices. Um, so it is a little bit different every weekend. So stay tuned. I do post that schedule um, each and every week in the chat as well as on the sheet with some track information there as well. If you want to break down each of the last six races a little bit further, you can actually go into the last six races at Daytona. Uh, you see start, uh, middle of the race. One I always like to look at is average running position. Um, Again, this one, this race is a little bit different, super speedway as well as it being the Daytona 500 season opener, but all this information is going to be there for each and every race, including DraftKings and FanDuel information there as well. And then down at the bottom, I've added some columns, some rows, sorry. Looking at the correlation from start to finish position, so obviously the super speedway, it's going to be much lower. Um, short tracks, it's going to be much higher. Obviously, we're going to see that, but this is all here. Um, this is how many drivers finished with positive place differential, how many finished with double digit place differential, which can be big because that scoring is huge, especially on DraftKings. Um, double digit fast laps. So I'm looking at drivers that have fast laps. We get points for that on DraftKings as well. 
how many drivers led 20 plus laps, how many led 50 plus, and how many led 100 plus laps. Also important in terms of looking for dominator points, dominator points are your laps led as well as your fast laps on DraftKings. So dominator points are worth a little bit more on DraftKings, obviously. Finishing positions worth a little bit more on FanDuel. So then like I said, the correlation. And then these ones, these last three rows are how many drivers started top 10 and finished top 10, how many started 11th to 20th and finished top 10, and how many finished or how many started outside the top 20 and finished top 10. So one trend we do see in terms of the Daytona 500 when you start breaking down that data and why I've added that in there just for quick reference is because we see that five drivers have started outside the top 20 but finished top 10 at the day in Daytona. This is the Daytona 500 as well as the summer race stats combined, but at Daytona in general that has happened with five or more drivers in three straight as we can see and five of the last six races so it definitely place differential is key here at daytona that's one thing we're going to pay attention to this week we'll get into a little bit more in the uh, picks uh, article as well as the live show and the podcast uh, coming up uh, later this week All right, that takes care of the cheat sheet if you got any questions how to make the model how to create your own copy um, how to go about anything, how to understand any of the stats, how to put it all together and decide what's important each and every week, make sure to reach out to me in chat or hit me up on Twitter at Jaeger underscore bombs nine. Thanks for checking out the video and we'll see you in the chat room. Good luck this week.